Hello, my name is Dr. Anne Maria Brennan and I'm Director of Graduate Studies at the Centre for Professional Practice. In that this isn't a video and you can't see me, here's a photograph of me so you can put a face to a name. Right, so what does the Centre for Professional Practice do? Well, it delivers practice focused programmes at the University's Medway campus. We do that over four long weekends a year, Friday to Sunday, and there's also online and self-study time and support from the centre staff. We also run bespoke CPD courses for collaborative partners. One thing we do do is we welcome requests for credit transfer. This is known as APEL, and if you have a postgraduate certificate or postgraduate diploma or a um, level seven and master's level module um, you may be able to use that or experiential learning um, to count towards part of your master's study so here are some examples of the programs we run our programs are part-time they're work-based programmes and they're for all professionals. Plus we have some special pathways. Um, an example of the generic pathway is the Masters in Professional Practice. Uh, we also, and that is available for all professionals, so if you wish to make your work, your learning and your learning your work, you can do that. We also have a teaching and learning pathway for in-service teachers who want to demonstrate how their professional practice is impacting on their work as a teacher. We also have um, part-time multi-professional programmes in the healthcare and dental areas. Uh, the generic one for this is the um, postgraduate certificate, diploma and masters in advanced and specialist healthcare. Um, we have more specialised pathways for dentistry, uh, including the MSc in Applied Dental Professional Practice and the MSc in Advanced Dental Clinical Practice, which is an accelerated pathway, and I'll explain that later. All our programmes are part-time and flexible, and they are a master's course that is spread over three years into three stages, and each stage represents a a certain um, degree within the master's degree. So the first year successful completion is the equivalent of the postgraduate certificate. Completing your second year uh, is the equivalent of the postgraduate diploma. And of course, the final year leads to the master's. But you can take an exit award or pause at any one year in your study. And of course, as I said, we have the accreditation of prior experiential and certificated learning, APEL. We have a professional development short course that's called Master's Level Study Online Short Course. It's an introduction to the skills and concepts that are required for successful study of master's programmes. And we have a website which um, gives you details of our courses, our new programmes and also news, views and comment about what is going on in the Centre for Professional Practice. So this brings us on to schematics of our programmes and here is the schematic for the Masters in Professional Practice. As you can see it's divided between three stages, stage one, year one, stage two, year two and stage three, the final year, leading to the Masters. And every year you study 60 credits of, of study, um, normally across two modules of 30 credits each. So in the first year, we start off with evidence-based practice, where you look at what is academic evidence, how you use it to address and answer uh, work-based questions, in your professional practice. You also do a module on learning development in organisations, which takes learning further beyond pedagogy to andragogy to the adult 
professional uh, working and studying uh, making their work a learning environment. In the second year uh, you have options so you can do interprofessional working or special area of study and that's a more free form type of module where you're uh, encapsulating, capturing the work you're doing uh, on a particular initiative that you're working on or have just completed. Or you might want to do interprofessional working where you reflect on your work as a professional interacting with others. Core to stage two is research skills and it's a module where you gain the skills needed for your final research project, the dissertation in the final year and part of that actually involves the preparation of a research proposal along with all the ethical and logistical and resource related um, um, components. In your final year you will do a dissertation which is 60 credits and is based on a research project that you carry out and we encourage all our students to show impact on their profession um, in the form of publishing, um, papers, um, posters, attendance at conferences so that they can make their research widely known. Moving from the generic professional practice program, we go to the teaching and learning pathway. And here you see a subtle difference. We still in stage one have evidence-based practice but we also have uh, bespoke education modules, school modules. The first one being the role of schooling, the thinking approach, which looks at cognition in education and how to, to reduce the cognitive load as a teacher. Uh, in the second year, research skills is still the, the, the core module there, but you also have a second core module, which is addressing barriers to learning, which looks at the problems that teachers face in undertaking education, uh, delivering education to their pupils who might be uh, beset by various barriers. So this looks at the common ones and the not so common ones and um, clever ways of overcoming. And in the final year, of course, there's the research and the dissertation that reports and then captures the um, research you do. Okay, we now move on to the healthcare strand. And the generic program here is the Masters in Advanced and Specialist Healthcare. Again, starting off with evidence-based practice, and then a series of, mod of, of optional modules involving things like professional standards setting for professional practice, or if you're involved in education in healthcare, uh, the delivery of that education. You might be involved with evaluation and audit, and so there's a module on that. That can be balanced with a special area of study that's either 15 or 30 credits, so that you can uh, cat capture the work you're doing on an initiative um, at the moment. In the second year, of course, there's that core module, the research skills, and you could um, choose one of the optional modules. These options are, are um, available across both stage one and stage two. And of course, stage three is common for all our students, and it's the dissertation. Uh, here we have the Masters in Applied Dental Professional Practice. And this is a variant on the Advanced and Specialist Healthcare, specifically um, for the dental professions. So dental nurses, dentists, um, dental educationalists. Um, and it involves evidence-based practice, of course, to start things off. And moves on to professional standards setting for professional practice, with a particular um, emphasis on dentist, the dental healthcare professions. Stage two, of course, has research skills and the options at stage two involve interprofessional working, delivery of education, 
uh, developing practice through mentorship in coaching and advancing dental professional practice. So you have a choice there of what you may wish to do as your options at stage two. And then at stage three, there's a core module, uh, which is the dissertation, which is common, as I said, to all our programmes. I mentioned articulated pathways, and this is an example of one of these collaborative uh, links we have, in this case, with the Faculty of Dental Practice, FGDP UK. And so um, those in dental clinical practice who undertake the diploma, the successful completion of that diploma basically covers half the masters and these um, successful students come in halfway through the masters um, and do the stage two core module in research skills and project proposal and then go on to complete with the dissertation. Now here's a slide that just gives you a flavour of the sorts of um, contact commitment in terms of um, being present on the university's campus at Medway. And this is an example of Masters in Professional Practice and as you can see there's a module that's common to most of the programmes there, the evidence-based practice. So the example here shows evidence-based practice being taught in September and November. So there's two weekends. So the setup weekend, the introductory weekend that sets um, work to be done, um, the assignment, and then the consolidation weekend later on in November. And then by December, you would have completed that module and done the assignment. Similarly, um, in the new year, in the second term, uh, learning development starts, so with a teaching weekend in January and a second teaching weekend in March. And most of our programmes follow this sort of um, this sort of model. That's an example of the first year in the Masters in Professional Practice. Now, we're very, very proud to have a very active alumni of past students. And I think we let our students speak for themselves about how they have found our programmes. Um, here are just a few of our past students. James Devine, who is now CEO of the Medway NHS Foundation Trust. And he found the programme enjoyable yet challenging and he found it excellent, which is, is good news. Uh, another one of our past students is Stuart Gardner. He heads up the Thinking Schools Academy Trust and he found that it enhanced his performance and his future professional pr prospects. So if you're thinking of moving up, diversifying, doing exciting things, the Masters is for you. Another one of our students, um, and so our students get all over the world, is Emma Crouch. She did the teaching and learning pathway because she wanted to focus in on mathematics and STEM subjects. And she is now in New Zealand um, pioneering um, teaching of mathematics. And she found the Masters valuable and it's structured around her own interest and passion, which was the teaching of mathematics. Um, another one of our students is uh, Kate Stevens, and she's doing the Advanced and Specialist Healthcare Masters, and she's a specialist nurse. And she has come to us with a um, very uh, long-standing experiential uh, experience as a specialist nurse. And she has been able to integrate that into the Masters programme. And she is, um, she finds that the tutors are supportive and she can now start to really delve into her role as a specialist nurse. Uh, here is Laura Clune, who comes to us from a dental background and she has found that the MSc has benefited her 
career and complements her work as a dental hygienist. And another um, student from the dentistry pathways is Matthew Condon, who in his a little vignette um, found that one of the most important parts of the programme for him was the access to research materials, the online journals, the university's online library system. And he actually was um, work, he works in Leeds and was working in Leeds whilst he studied with us. And distance in this case was no barrier whatsoever. So that's just an idea of some of the students we have on our courses. And we're very proud that we constantly achieve a very high grade of satisfaction in the student postgraduate student experience survey. And we get we had a hundred percent overall student satisfaction last year, and for a whole series of questions around learning and organizing themselves into doing their research and becoming independent learners, research active and impactful on their professional practice. So if you want to make your work, your study and your study, your work, please join us at the Centre for Professional Practice. We would really like to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening to this little presentation. Bye-bye.